Syria addresses two messages to the UN Security Council Chairman and the UN Secretary General on the Israeli authorities' intention to conduct oil exactions in occupied Golan, branding the measure as a flagrant violation. Al-Jafari says there is a politically immoral program that trades with the humanitarian situation of the refugees and what Syria needs is real unbiased aid. Rising voices are monitored in various Egyptian cities refusing Morsi's policy. Good afternoon and welcome to our news for today. The Foreign and Expatriates Ministry has addressed two identical messages to the Chairman of the UN Security Council and the UN Secretary General on the intention of the Israeli Occupation Authorities to conduct oil excavations in the occupied Syrian Golan. The Ministry affirmed that such measure is illegal and constitutes a flagrant violation of the UN Security Council's resolution. 497 of 1981 and aims at consecrating the state of occupation and annexation in contravention of the UN Security Council's resolution, the Ministry asserted. Syria's permanent representative to the UN, Dr. Bashar al-Jafari, has affirmed that Syria needs real unbiased aid, not only focusing attention on the humanitarian situation that does not precisely describe what is actually taking place in the country. Al-Jafari's remarks came in a press statement following a closed-door session of the UN Security Council on the situation in Syria held today. He added that some UN Security Council's member countries still ignore many important data and that all parties in Syria must be encouraged to be involved in national dialogue. He explained how the Syrian government, in the framework of its cooperation with UN Under Secretary General for Humanitarian Affairs, Valery Amos, has allowed access to 11 international NGOs to deliver humanitarian aid into the Syrian territories. The Syrian ambassador continued as saying that representative of the Office for the Coordination of Humanitarian Affairs and representatives of international and national governmental organizations have carried out about 200 field visits inside Syria. I'm talking about this point because it is related to the issue of access and the Syrian government has granted this right of access to all areas inside the Syrian territories, Al Jafari added. He pointed out that all sides must abide by the UN General Assembly Resolution 182 46, which respects the sovereignty of Syria and other countries when the humanitarian aid is distributed. He said many of the countries who met in Kuwait are the cause of the Syrians' suffering because they are the same sides that support, finance, arm and train the terrorists and provide them with media coverage to portray them as defenders of freedom, not as terrorists who destroy the infrastructure, hospitals, schools and airports and attack civil aviation and diplomatic missions. Al Jafari described as a naive proposal, the prerequisite of President al-Assad's departure in order to start the dialogue. Those who want dialogue don't put preconditions. It is called a national dialogue and not a national dialogue with preconditions, he added. Iraqi Prime Minister Nouri al-Maliki has called on world countries to benefit from the mistakes they had committed in Syria. He said that if they want stability in the area, they should boycott the states that support the armed terrorist groups with money and arms, particularly in Syria, as they create hotbeds of tension, violence and conflict, which leave their serious repercussions on neighboring countries. 
head of the International Relations Committee at the Russian Duma Council, Alexei Poshkov, has said that regardless of how many meetings the so-called Friends of Syria hold, with or without the presence of the opposition, they won't find a way out of the crisis without Damascus' participation. In a press conference he held in Moscow, Poshkov said, all the successes the opposition claims to have realized along the lines of conflict are met the next day with bigger successes by the Syrian army units. He stressed that the only solution to the crisis is dialogue. The Imam of Al-Aqsa Mosque, Sheikh Salah al-Din Abu Arifa, has called on the people of Syria to come to terms and resort to peace and mercy. Sheikh Abu Arifa addressed a message from occupied Jerusalem in which he branded interna internal fighting in Syria as being against Islamic teachings. He affirmed that such war is encouraged by some Western and Arab states who want to plant chaos and sedition in the country. He prayed to God to bring back security to Syria. Our army units have inflicted heavy losses on terrorists in Dariya and al Mabdamiya farms, killing a large number of them and destroying their hideouts. An army unit clashed with terrorists along the railway station south of Shreda Square in Dariya, killing and injuring several snipers. Another army unit killed and wounded a number of terrorists in al Mabdamiya farms and destroyed three machine gun equipped vehicles and two missiles launchers. The army also found two warehouses, the first containing large quantities of diesel and the other ammunition. Terrorists blow up a booby-trapped car near Sahara complex in Aqrama al-Jadida neighborhood in Wadi Dahab in Homs. Initial information refers to casualties and huge material damage. An army unit destroyed at dawn today a terrorist den in a Zafarania village in a Rastan suburb, killing and wounding dozens of terrorists. A source in the governorate said that among the terrorists killed were Ala Alawi, Muhammad al sattouf and Abdullah Ahmed al Khalid. Our army units killed and wounded dozens of terrorists in a series of operations against their dens in Dara countryside. A military source told Sana reporter that heavy losses were inflicted upon terrorists as the army units destroyed a machine gun equipped car, killing all the terrorists inside and destroying all the weapons and ammunition in Dara al Balad. The source added that a number of terrorists who were perpetrating acts of killing, sabotage, and theft were killed in Ghabaghib, including Abdo Al Wadi and Muhammad Al Mawardi. In parallel, army unit killed and injured the members of an armed terrorist group who opened fire randomly on citizens near Al Hamama Rind roundabout in the city. In Busra Sham, an army unit foiled an attempt to blow up two explosive devices that were planted at the entrance of the town. Terrorist Hussam Ali Bakur confessed to taking part in acts of abduction, rape and slaughter along with the terrorist group in the city of Homs in addition to joining Al-Qaeda in Iraq. In confessions broadcast by the Syrian TV, Bakur said that entered Iraq illegally and joined a group of 200 gunmen from Al-Qaeda in Baghdad where they participated in terrorist operations for nine days before being told that their work was over and that they should return to Syria. He said that he was instructed to abduct four young women from Baba Amr, so he went to where they live along with four other gunmen and abducted them and took them to a basement near the roundabout in Baba Amr where they blindfolded them and left them there only to return the next day and rape them and later kill them. He said that afterwards they abducted ten citizens from various areas in homes and took them to the same basement and slit their throat in a similar manner. Hezbollah Secretary General Sayyid Hassan Nasrullah denied rumors circulated in misleading media channels about an alleged injury he was exposed to along with his deputy Sheikh Naim Qasim along the Syrian-Lebanese borders. Sayyid Nasrullah 
stressed in a speech he delivered yesterday on Al Manar TV that Syria's unity and sovereignty must be protected. He pointed out that there is a Zionist project to divide Syria into ethnic entities, adding that no national movement should accept that. He made it clear that Hezbollah fighters do not dominate any areas along the Syrian-Lebanese border, as some news reports misleadingly mentioned. He concluded that Qatar and Saudi Arabia have some influence on the terrorist groups in these Lebanese villages, and they do nothing to stop them. Calls for holding protests and conducting acts of civil disobedience spread in several Egyptian cities against the rule of Muslim Brotherhood led by President Mohammed Morsi. Residents of Al Manufiya Governorate started today a wide scale civil disobedience movement to protest Morsi's policy, and thousands of employees and workers did the same in the city of Tanta as members of the revolutionary and youth groups formed a human bridge in preparation for another sitting next Saturday. With this, we end our news for today. Thank you for watching. For more news about Syria and the region and to view this bulletin again, you can always visit our website in English, syriaonline.sy. Now to latest business and market news with Khalid Saqabani after a short break.